Chapter 11. Your Subconscious Mind As a partner in success, success means successful living. A long period of peace, joy, and happiness on this plane may be termed success. The eternal experience of these qualities is the everlasting life spoken of by Jesus. The real things of life, such as peace, harmony, integrity, security, and happiness are intangible. They come from the deep self of man. Meditating on these qualities builds these treasures of heaven in our subconscious. It is where moth and rust do not consume, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Matthew 6.20 The Three Steps to Success Let us discuss three steps to success. First step. The first step to success is to find out the thing you love to do, then do it. Success is in loving your work. Although, if a man is a psychiatrist, it is not adequate for him to get a diploma and place it on the wall. He must keep up with the times, attend conventions, and continue studying the mind and its workings. The successful psychiatrist visits clinics and reads the latest scientific articles. In other words, he is informed in the most advanced methods of alleviating human suffering. The successful psychiatrist or doctor must have the interest of his patients at heart. Someone may say, how can I put the first step into operation? I do not know what I should do. In such a case, pray for guidance as follows. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me my true place in life. Repeat this prayer quietly, positively, and lovingly to your deeper mind. As you persist with faith and confidence, the answer will come to you as a feeling, a hunch or a tendency in a certain direction. It will come to you clearly and in peace and as an inner silent awareness. Second Step The second step to success is to specialize in some particular branch of work and know more about it than anyone else. For example, if a young man chooses chemistry as his profession, he should concentrate on one of the many branches in this field. He should give all of his time and attention to his chosen specialty. He should become sufficiently enthusiastic to try to know all there is available about his field. If possible, he should know more than anyone else. The young man should become ardently interested in his work and should desire to serve the world. He that is great among you, let him become your servant. There is a great contrast in this attitude of mind in comparison to that of the man who only wants to make a living or just get by. Getting by is not true success. Man's motive must be great, nobler, and more altruistic. He must serve others, thereby casting his bread upon the waters. Third step. The third step is the most important one. You must be sure that the thing you want to do does not redound to your success only. Your desire must not be selfish. It must benefit humanity. The path of a complete circuit must be formed. In other words, your idea must go forth with the purpose of blessing or serving the world. It will then come back to you pressed down, shaken together and running over. If it is to benefit yourself exclusively, the circle or complete circuit is not formed, and you may experience a short circuit in your life which may consist of limitation or sickness. The Measure of True Success Some people may say, but Mr. James made a fortune in selling fraudulent oil stock. A man may seem to succeed for a while, but the money he obtained by fraud usually takes wings and flies away. When we rob from another, we rob from ourselves, because we are in a mood of lack and limitation which may manifest itself in our body, home life, and affairs. What we think and feel, we create. We create what we believe. Even though a man may have accumulated a fortune fraudulently, he is not successful. There is no success without peace of mind. What good is man's accumulated wealth if he cannot sleep nights? is sick or has a guilt complex. I knew a man in London who told me of his exploits. He had been a professional pickpocket and had amassed a large amount of money. 
He had a summer home in France and lived in a royal fashion in England. His story was that he was in constant dread of being arrested by Scotland Yard. He had many inner disorders which were undoubtedly caused by his constant fear and deep-seated guilt complex. He knew he had done wrong. This deep sense of guilt attracted all kinds of trouble to him. Subsequently, he voluntarily surrendered to the police and served a prison sentence. After his release from prison, he sought psychological and spiritual counsel and became transformed. He went to work and became an honest, law-abiding citizen. He found what he loved to do and was happy. A successful person loves his work and expresses himself fully. Success is contingent upon a higher ideal than the mere accumulation of riches. The man of success is the man who possesses great psychological and spiritual understanding. Many of the great industrialists today depend upon the correct use of the subconscious minds for their success. There was an article published some years ago about Flagler, an oil magnate. He admitted that the secret of his success was his ability to see a project in its completion. For instance, in his case, he closed his eyes, imagined a big oil industry, saw trains running on tracks, heard whistles blowing, and saw smoke. Having seen and felt the fulfillment of his prayer, his subconscious mind brought about its realization. If you imagine an objective clearly, you will be provided with the necessities, in ways you know not of, through the wonder-working power of your subconscious mind. In considering the three steps to success, you must never forget the underlying power of the creative forces of your subconscious mind. This is the energy in back of all steps in any plan of success. Your thought is creative. Thought fused with feeling becomes a subjective faith or belief, and according to your belief, it is done unto you. Matthew 9, 29. A knowledge of a mighty force in you which is capable of bringing to pass all your desires gives you confidence and a sense of peace. Whatever your field of action may be, you should learn the laws of your subconscious mind. When you know how to apply the powers of your mind and when you are expressing yourself fully and giving of your talents to others, you are on the sure path to true success. If you are about God's business or any part of it, God, by His very nature, is for you, so who can be against you? With this understanding, there is no power in heaven or on earth to withhold success from you. How He Made His Dream Come True A movie actor told me that he had very little education, but he had a dream as a boy of becoming a successful movie actor. Out in the field mowing hay, driving the cows home, or even when milking them, he said, I would constantly imagine I saw my name in big lights at a large theater. I kept this up for years until finally I ran away from home. I got extra jobs in the motion picture field, and the day finally came when I saw my name in great big lights as I did when I was a boy. Then he added, I know the power of sustained imagination to bring success. His dream pharmacy became a reality. Thirty years ago, I knew a young pharmacist who was receiving $40 a week plus commission on sales. After 25 years, he said to me, I will get a pension and retire. I said to this young man, why don't you own your own store? Get out of this place. Raise your sights. Have a dream for your children. Maybe your son wants to be a doctor. Perhaps your daughter desires to be a great musician. His answer was that he had no money. He began to awaken to the fact that whatever he could conceive as true, he could give conception. The first step toward his goal was his awakening to the powers of his subconscious mind, which I briefly elaborated on for his benefit. His second step was his realization that if he could succeed in conveying an idea to his subconscious mind, the latter would somehow bring it to pass. He began to imagine that he was in his own store. He mentally arranged the bottles, dispensed prescriptions, and imagined several clerks in the store waiting on customers. He also visualized a big bank balance. Mentally, he worked in that imaginary store. 
Like a good actor, he lived the role. Act as though I am and I will be. This pharmacist put himself wholeheartedly into the act, living, moving, and acting on the assumption that he owned the store. The sequel was interesting. He was discharged from his position. He found new employment with a large chain store, became manager, and later on, district manager. He saved enough money in four years to provide a down payment on a drugstore of his own. He called it his dream pharmacy. It was, he said, he said, exactly the store I saw in my imagination. He became a recognized success in his chosen field and was happy doing what he loved to do. Using the Subconscious Mind in Business Some years ago, I gave a lecture to a group of businessmen on the powers of imagination and the subconscious mind. In this lecture, I pointed out how Goethe used his imagination wisely when confronted with difficulties and predicaments. His biographers point out that he was accustomed to fill many hours quietly holding imaginary conversations. It is well known that his custom was to imagine one of his friends before him in a chair answering him in the right way. In other words, if he were concerned over any problems, he imagined his friends giving him the right or appropriate answer, accompanied with the usual gestures and tonal qualities of the voice, and he made the entire imaginary scene as real and as vivid as possible. One of the men present at my lecture was a young stockbroker. He proceeded to adopt the technique of Goethe. He began to have mental, imaginary conversations with a multimillionaire banker friend of his who used to congratulate him on his wise and sound judgment and compliment him on his purchase of the right stocks. He used to dramatize this imaginary conversation until he had psychologically fixed it as a form of belief in his mind. The broker's inner talking and controlled imagination certainly agreed with his aim, which was to make sound investments for his clients. His main purpose was to make money for his clients and to see them prosper financially by his wise counsel. He is still using his subconscious mind in his business, and he is a brilliant success in his field of endeavor. Boy of 16 Years Turns Failure into Success A young boy who was attending high school said to me, I'm getting very poor grades. My memory is failing. I do not know what is the matter. I discovered that the only thing wrong with this boy was his attitude, which was one of indifference and resentment toward some of his teachers and fellow students. I taught him how to use his subconscious mind and how to succeed in his studies. He began to affirm certain truths several times a day, particularly at night prior to sleep and also in the morning after awakening. These are the best times to impregnate the subconscious mind. He affirmed as follows, I realize that my subconscious mind is a storehouse of memory. It retains everything I read and hear from my teachers. I have a perfect memory, and the infinite intelligence in my subconscious mind constantly reveals to me everything I need to know at all my examinations, whether written or oral. I radiate love and goodwill to all my teachers and fellow students. I sincerely wish for them success and all good things. This young man is now enjoying a greater freedom than he has ever known. He is now receiving all A's. He constantly imagines the teachers and his mother congratulating him on his success in his studies. How to become successful. In buying and selling and buying and selling, remember that your conscious mind is the starter and your subconscious mind is the motor. You must start the motor to enable it to perform its work. Your conscious mind is the dynamo that awakens the power of your subconscious mind. The first step in conveying your clarified desire, idea, or image to the deeper mind is to relax, immobilize the attention, get still, and be quiet. This quiet, relaxed, and peaceful attitude of mind prevents extraneous matter and false ideas from interfering with your mental absorption of your ideal. Furthermore, in the quiet, passive, and receptive attitude of mind, effort is reduced to a minimum. 
The second step is to begin to imagine the reality of that which you desire. For example, you may wish to buy a home, and in your relaxed state of mind affirm as follows. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious IND is all-wise. It reveals to me now the ideal home which is central, ideal, is in a lovely environment, meets all my requirements, and is commensurate with my income. I am now turning this request over to my subconscious mind, and I know it responds according to the nature of my request. I release this request with absolute faith and confidence in the same way that a farmer deposits a seed in the ground, trusting implicitly in the laws of growth. The answer to your prayer may come through an advertisement in the paper, through a friend, or you may be guided directly to a particular home which is exactly what you are seeking. There are many ways by which your prayer may be answered. The principal knowledge in which you may place your confidence is that the answer always comes, provided you trust the working of your deeper mind. You may wish to sell a home, land, or any kind of property. In private consultation with real estate brokers, I have told them of the way I sold my own home on Orlando Avenue in Los Angeles. Many of them have applied the technique I used with remarkable and speedy results. I placed a sign which read, for sale by owner, in the garden in front of my home. The day after, I said to myself as I was going to sleep, supposing you sold your house, what would you do? I answered my own question and I said, I would take that sign down and throw it into the garage. In my imagination, I took hold of the sign, pulled it up from the ground, placed it on my shoulder, went to the garage, threw it on the floor and said jokingly to the sign, I don't need you anymore. I felt the inner satisfaction of it all, realizing it was finished. The next day, a man gave me a deposit of $1,000 and said to me, take your sign down. We will go into escrow now. Immediately, I pulled the sign up and took it to the garage. The outer action conformed to the inner. There is nothing new about this. As within, so without, meaning according to the image impressed on your subconscious mind, so it is on the objective screen of life. The outside mirrors the inside. External action follows internal action. Here is another very popular method used in selling homes, land, or any kind of property. Affirm slowly, quietly, and feelingly as follows. Infinite intelligence attracts to me the buyer for this home who wants and who prospers in it. This buyer may look at many other homes, but mine is the only one he wants and will buy because he is guided by the infinite intelligence within him. I now the buyer is right. The time is right and the price is right. Everything about it is right. The deeper currents of my subconscious mind are now in operation bringing both of us together in divine order. I know that it is so. Remember always that what you are seeking is also seeking you, and whenever you want to sell a home or property of any kind, there is always someone who wants what you have to offer. By using the powers of your subconscious mind correctly, you free your mind of all sense of competitor and anxiety in buying and selling. How she succeeded In getting what she wanted there is a young lady who regularly comes to my lectures and classes. She had to change buses three times. It took her one and a half hours each time to come to the lectures. In one lecture, I explained how a young man needed a car in his work and received one. She went home and experimented as outlined in my lecture. Here is her letter in part, narrating her application of my method and published with her permission. Dear Dr. Murphy, this is how I received a Cadillac car. I wanted one to come to the lectures regularly. In my imagination, I went through the identical process I would go through if I were actually driving a car. I went to the showroom and the salesman took me for a ride in one. I also drove it several blocks. I claimed the Cadillac car as my own over and over again. I kept the mental picture of getting into the car, driving it, feeling the upholstery, etc., consistently for over two weeks. Last week, I drove to your lectures in a Cadillac. 
My uncle in Inglewood passed away and left me his Cadillac and his entire estate. A success technique employed by many outstanding executives and businessmen. There are many prominent who quietly use the abstract term, success, over and over many times a day until they reach a conviction that success is theirs. They know that the idea of success contains all the essential elements of success. Likewise, you can begin now to repeat the word, success, to yourself with faith and conviction. Your subconscious mind will accept it as true of you and you will be under a subconscious compulsion to succeed. You are compelled to express your subjective beliefs, impressions, and convictions. What does success imply to you? You want, undoubtedly, to be successful in your home life and in your relationship with others. You wish to be outstanding in your chosen work or profession. You wish to possess a beautiful home and all the money you need to live comfortably and happily. You want to be successful in your prayer life and in your contact with the powers of your subconscious mind. You are a businessman also because you are in the business of living. Become a successful businessman by imagining yourself doing what you long to do and possessing the things you long to possess. Become imaginative. Mentally participate in the reality of the successful state. Make a habit of it. Go to sleep feeling successful every night and perfectly satisfied, and you will eventually succeed in implanting the idea of success in your subconscious mind. Believe you were born to succeed, and wonders will happen as you pray. Profitable Pointers 1. Success means successful living. When you are peaceful, happy, joyous, and doing what you love to do, you are successful. 2. Find out what you love to do, then do it. If you don't know your true expression, ask for guidance and the lead will come. 3. Specialize in your particular field and try to know more about it than anyone else. 4. A successful man is not selfish. His main desire in life is to serve humanity. 5. There is no true success without peace of mind. 6. A successful man possesses great psychological and spiritual understanding. 7. If you imagine an objective clearly, you will be provided with the necessities through the wonder-working power of your subconscious mind. 8. Your thought fused with feeling becomes a subjective belief, and according to your belief, is it done unto you? 9. The power of sustained imagination draws forth the miracle-working powers of your subconscious mind. 10. If you are seeking promotion in your work, Imagine your employer, supervisor, or loved one congratulating you on your promotion. Make the picture vivid and real. Hear the voice, see the gestures, and feel the reality of it all. Continue to do this frequently and through frequent occupancy of your mind, you will experience the joy of the answered prayer. 11. Your subconscious mind is a storehouse of memory. For a perfect memory, affirm frequently. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me everything I need to know at all times, everywhere. 12. If you wish to sell a home or property of any kind, affirm slowly, quietly, and feelingly as follows. Infinite intelligence attracts to me the buyer for this house or property, who wants it, and who prospers in it. Sustain the awareness and the deeper currents of your subconscious mind will bring it to pass. 13. The idea of success contains all the elements of success. Repeat the word success to yourself frequently with faith and conviction, and you will be under a subconscious compulsion to succeed. 